actually, no. I think it was David Palmer. I'm not sure. But he was talking about being selfless, you know, that it's a good thing. And I thought he was saying, like, the whole point of life was to yield all yourself for other people. And I thought, the hell? Now, I know what it is to be selfless, and it ain't a good thing. But let's think about selflessness. And I was impressed by this whole concept, this doctrine of selflessness. What really impressed me about it was um, The Lust for Life, when it was about Vincent Van Gogh. And I watched in the movie in Vincent Van Gogh how he, he went to help the coal miners. They were living in object poverty. And he really believed in the doctrine of selflessness. He went there a healthy man. He left there a sick one. He literally gave them everything, even the clothes off his back. He wound up sleeping in a cot with an old shaggy blanket, starving to death. That's what selflessness did. Selflessness basically put everything before yourself. Selflessness is actually you have no love or respect or honor for yourself. Because if you did, you would take care of yourself first. You will understand that yourself is the primary important part of yourself. This is doctrine of selflessness. You know, it is destructive and detrimental. It will keep, it will wind, you will wind up being a doormat that everybody will walk over and kick. But of course, you wouldn't say anything about it because it's okay. You know, you have to have the mentality and feeling, it's okay, I could take it. You know, as long as they're happy, you know, it's okay. You know, God bless them while they're laughing at you. But you think you're doing a noble thing, you know, because you're being selfless. And selflessness, however it happened, has been acquainted with love. You are not loving someone or love being loving towards someone unless you're being selfless. But I have experienced selflessness. And let me tell you, that is bullshit. Talking about making a great job of making yourself miserable and living in depravity, be selfless. I could tell you about that. It's fucking nuts. Now we have the other end of the spectrum, which is selfish. To be selfish. Selfish is as bad and destructive as selflessness. Again, selfishness is that I'm going to take from everyone. I don't give a shit about anyone. I'm only thinking about myself. Well, if you treat people that way, people are going to stop wanting to be around you because you're selfish. You have no honor and respect for others. And ultimately, you have no honor and respect to regard for yourself either. People who are selfless and people who are selfish the core of both of them is the same. It's like the North and the South Pole. They both have no regard, love, or respect for themselves, for the self that they truly are. They're just going about it in different ways. One is taking from everyone, as if to say, fuck all of ye. And the other one is giving to everyone and saying fuck myself I don't matter the balance is somewhere but now I always thought like the balance was to be centered in oneself not to be selfless and not to be selfish and that is true but there was something now that I was missing with some bit of understanding that I was missing that I got today. And that is to be selfless or to be selfish 
is all catering to ego. When a person is selfless, they're catering to others. It's all about the other. It is all about others. But they're not catering to the, the divine within that person. They're catering to other people's egos. The demand of their egos, the expectation of their egos, the need of their egos. Not the divine source within those people, but to their ego. And that's why selfless people always wind up being martyrs. People are martyred not by the divine expression in others, but by their egos. The same thing with selfishness. To be selfish is that you're catering to your ego. It's all about feeding the needs of your ego, which is why they usually wind up miserable anyway. No matter how much they have, they're always miserable because they spend their lives feeding the ego and not the divine spirit self within themselves. So, they are deprived, they are on drugs, they are miserable, and they, and they don't understand why, when they have so much, it's because they're catering to the ego and not to the spirit within. Either one of them spells disaster, absolute disaster. And both of them have a but it's all ego-based. It's not spirit-based at all. It's all ego-based. Absolutely every single bit of it is ego-based. Ego-based actions or inactions based upon one's own unhealthy ego. Has nothing to do with spirituality. Has nothing to do with nurturing one's spirit. Of course, the divine self is going to take care of itself. I cannot give or express the best of myself if I do not nourish myself first and foremost. It just could not possibly happen any other way. My divine self the spirit within myself and let's face it if a person was nurturing their spirit self the true self in themselves they would know they don't need to take from anyone because there are many ways to get something without compromising somebody else in order for them to get what they need and so there is no need to be selfish when you are aware and honoring your true self. And there is no need to be selfless when you are honoring your true self. Because you also realize that there are many ways for anyone to get anything. And you don't have to compromise yourself or lay down on the ground in order to give to someone else you who are you catering to the divine source that's in me is also in them i don't have to be without so they can have when we're both getting from the divine source and i don't have to take so that i can have and they don't have because we're all can go to divine source to get what we need to be selfless and to be selfish it's an ego-based doctrine. And that doctrine is in every well-known religion that I could think of. And institution in this world, in this world. You have both of those dynamics playing out. You have the selfish, which is catered to their ego, in governments, in religious institutions, 
in the education system. And then you have the people who are told to be selfless. And this whole idea that if you are not selfless, if you are not selfless, you're not a good person. Really? What does being a good person and this whole concept of being a good person, a good person, a good person, and you're a bad person to the good people, to the quote unquote good people, you're a bad person if you're not selfless. Well, guess what? You're not a good person if you're selfless. You're a stupid person if you're selfless. And the whole idea of that, oh, well, you're a bad person if you're selfish. Well, yes, you are a bad person when you're selfish, but you're also a stupid person when you're selfish. It's all ego-based. It is all ego-based. It has nothing to do with spirituality. It has nothing to do with divine order. It has nothing to do with the law of oneness. It has nothing to do with the law of love. Love does not demand anything from anyone. And love does not compromise itself for anyone. It stands strong. And I am thankful that it does. It's not going to lay itself on the ground. And it doesn't ask anyone to do it. There is no need for sacrifices and there is no need to take. When there is more than enough for everyone. That is a healthy individual who understands this. To truly love oneself is not to be selfish or selfish. It is to have a healthy ego that understands that the spirit within is the most important and that will always be and it is always seeking to express its true nature with the knowledge in knowing that all things are possible that we live in an abundant universe there is no need to forgo and there is no need to take there is more than enough for all of us and it is available to me too that nurtures a healthy self-esteem which is a healthy ego but you cannot have a healthy ego if you are neglecting to acknowledge that first you are a spirit being and you will have, and you will have a healthy spirit and to get away from this idea of being a good person, a bad person. Be what you are, a spirit being. I thank God the rest of nature don't be thinking. Do you think a tree, who, which is a conscious being like, think, oh, well, I have to be a good tree. I have to be selfless. I won't get the minerals out of the ground so I can grow and be healthy and strong. So that other tree may need it more than I need it. Fuck no, they don't think that. And they don't think, oh, well, I have to be selfish. I have to take all the minerals out of the ground so I could be the biggest and strongest tree in the forest. They don't think that either. They just think, look, I take what I need. I think I'm thankful for it. I have to take care of myself so I give myself what I need to grow and to mature. It's not even thinking about the other trees. It's thinking about what it needs itself and in it focusing on what it needs itself. The rest is taken care of. It grows. It's strong. There's more than enough for others. Because it's only taking what it needs to be the best that it is and in the process of it being the best that it is it yields good fruit beneficial fruit that is helpful and beneficial to others but it's not thinking about the others it's thinking about being the best that it is and getting what it need 
not more, not less, but what exactly what it needs to be balanced and healthy. That's it. That's it. No more, no less. But when it comes to people, the imagination has just gone riot. Like the ego is just always in the forefront either from one stupid end of the scale to the other stupid end. and the thing about the ego is you're looking at life through the lens of the ego you do not have a concept that everything works together oneness and that you are in that oneness of everything from a selfish point of view you don't understand that everything works together you're thinking everything else is more important than you are. That you are somehow a mistake, you know, in creation. And that you being the best of who you are is not important. But of course it's important. You wouldn't be here if it wasn't important. There are things in you that you have to give or have to give that is just as important as anybody else. And then in the other scale, being selfish, you think it's all about you. It's all about you. Thinking that nobody else have anything worthy to ha to give or to offer, but it's all about you. But that's not true either. You're only one of everything else in creation. It's about balance. But if you look at it from a spiritual point of view, from the eternal self, not the ego, but the spirit that we are, within and without, you see the oneness of everything and how everything falls in its natural place. And no one is judging. Just be who you are. That's it. Be the best of who you are. Put your focus on that. And everything else will take place in its natural course. Like everything else. And it's not even a question of whether something is good or bad. It's about, is it beneficial? Or not? Does it work? Is it yielding good, you know, beneficial results? Or not? Even the whole idea, oh, this is a good person, that's a bad that's an ego thing. It's an ego thing. And only seem to be among human beings. You know? It's a judgment call based upon ego. Things are either beneficial or they're not. It either works or it don't. It either nurtures or it doesn't. It's either loving or it's not. You're far better being a loving person than a good person. Loving. Love is the, is, 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 is the vibration and the heartbeat of creation. You have, most people are busy being good, pretending to be good, according to their concept of whatever good is. But they don't focus on being loving. Because they're not loving themselves. They're too busy being good instead of loving themselves. And the, and, the, and the ironic thing about it is the more you truly love yourself, the spirit self, from the self, not from the ego, but from the self, that love is going to radiate out, radiate out and love everything else. How you ultimately treat yourself is going to reflect itself in your life, in your relationships with other people and, and everything else. That will be the manifestation of it all. And sometimes that requires you stand up and say, oh no, oh no, 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 no. No, I'm not taking that. You, you ain't coming here with that. Why? Because I love myself. You know, I'm not a doormat. Okay? 
You are not going to walk over me. And I, and hello, this is the selfless mentality. The selfless mentality will sacrifice itself for the sake of others. And that sake of others could be something as simple as this person wants to be happy. So my desires and needs have to be sacrificed for this person. Freak that. What kind of shit fucking mentality is that? Why should that person's happiness and well-being be more important than yours? You're dealing with a selfish person, which you think they're going to say, oh, okay, well, maybe I feel bad. Maybe I won't take it all from you. Well, you're giving it all, so why the hell won't they take it all? You know what you're dealing with. And one would even say they should take it all because you obviously don't have any respect or appreciation for it. There you go. You know? Oh, it's for the sake of this, for the sake of that. Well, whatever it's for the sake for, one thing is absolutely true. I'm going to live with myself my whole entire life. And beyond, I'm not going to be like dealing with you my whole entire life. So why should I put my state of being, happiness, nerd, happiness, nourishment, why should I compromise that? Because you want you need now if i could help you i will help you of course i will but i'm not going to put myself in a compromised position for your benefit we live in an abundant universe there is no need for me to be compromised on my nourishment because you need nourishment there is plenty for us all The question shouldn't even come to mind. Love when ask someone to compromise themselves. There is no need for it. And if you truly love yourself and love somebody else, you wouldn't ask them to compromise for your happiness. That is not the characteristic of true love. Not to my understanding, anyway. That's an ego-based dynamic. That's not a divine spirit dynamics. It doesn't work that way. Sacrifice. And you hear that all the time. It's like this really, really crazy concept that to love someone requires sacrifice no it doesn't but we have many stories many stories to love god you have to sacrifice there was a period in time is written where by the way god required people actually sacrifice their children to prove that they love them what kind of crap is that that is psychotic I would no more put my child on an altar and take his life to prove fuck all. Why? Because one, I love myself. Two, I love my child. And if God is supposed to be so egotistical and so uh, lacking in self-esteem that it will require such a thing, then that's not a God that I want any part of. And even this whole idea of God, the divine source of all things, will require us to sacrifice, to suffer for it. It's a crazy concept. Why would God, the infinite source of all things, need me or you to give it anything when it has everything? There is nothing I can give it that it doesn't already have. In fact, everything that I have, it gave it to me it gave me my very life and existence the whole idea that i have to give it to her 
in order for God to be happy with me is crazy. When all that I am, it created for me to be. And all that I have, it supplies. That concept is all ego-based. It's not rooted in spirituality. It is ego-based derangement. We have to get this straight. If God was not pleased with me, but then he could just take me out of. That's it. Why would he give something to me in the first place and then going to demand I give it back to prove what? To prove that I love it? Even the love I feel comes from the divine source. There is nothing about me or anything else that does not come from the divine source. We really have a really screwed up, clouded, cracked lens when it comes to divine source. And that lens is really, has been an instrumental in making our lives miserable. And we got to get it straight. This is something we have to get straight. I would suggest you get it straight. I know doggone well I'm getting it straight and I thank God for this enlightenment. And presently in the world and all this shenanigans going with this COVID and faking saving the world BS. It's very interesting how they, you know, chant is for the greater good. You know, get the vax for the greater good. Sacrifice the comfort of your life for the greater good. Do it for the team for the greater good. Who's good? It ain't good for me. And ultimately ain't good for you either. This whole concept of the greater good. Let's not talk about the greater good. Let's talk about doing the loving thing. If I love myself and love others, would I put them in a compromising position? Would I cause them suffering? No, I would not. I would not do it. Because it's not a loving thing to do. The love inside of me do not want to feel myself suffer. And I don't want to see you suffer. But people would do it for the greater good though. Whatever the hell that means. Who's good? Who's good? Well, it obviously ain't good for me. So who's good are we talking about here? We're talking about your good? Well, okay. Why do I have to suffer for your good? Why do I have to go without for it so you could feel good? I don't agree with that. My life is important to me. My comfort is important to me. And I do not feel one way. I absolutely do not feel that your comfort and your happiness and whatever you feel is good for you. Is more important than what I feel is good for me. I am not going to put you above myself. I am only responsible for myself. And if I don't take the responsibility for myself. And nurture myself lovingly. Then my whole life is a sham. What person who really care for you is going to ask something like that for you, from you? Who would ask that who really care for you? I want you to suffer. I want you to do without. I want you to sacrifice so that I could be happy. What kind of person would even ask that of you if they really cared about you? No one would. So that should be a red flag in itself. If someone ever say, well, if you really cared about me, you would do something. I know it's going to put you in a compromising position, but it would make me feel really happy and I could get what I want. Red flag. Red flag. Let alone that they demanded of you. Demanded of you? 
the man in the bureau said, wait a minute, who, what are we talking about here? Am I catering to something, a real need of yours, or am I talking to your ego? If I'm, Am I talking to the divine self within you, or am I talking to your ego? Because it sounds like to me, I'm talking to your ego. And as far as your ego is concerned, you can kiss my ass. I don't care. Now, you need something, if I can help it, and I, it ain't going to take a, it ain't not going to compromise me, but then I'll help you. Because I want to do it, because I care about you. But if I can do it, I'll do it. And if I can't do it, well, then I can't do it. You're going to have to pray about it. And I pray about it with you because th there's always a way. There's always a way. There are multiple sources of anything in this world to get something done. No one has to be compromised. Don't come to me about the greater good. Because then we got to have to have a conversation about who good are we talking about here. People have sacrificed in their life, their homes, their businesses, their own body, their own their, their, their own health and well-being. For this concept, this idea of the greater good. Who's good? Who's benefiting from it? Well, if I'm not benefiting from it, you can kiss my ass. No. If I can't be happy and you be happy with it, and, it, and if it come down to a choice, well then because I love myself, I'm going for me. That's just it. It's freaking nuts the way people have been conditioned for the greater good. And they don't even ask who's good. Who's good? We're talking about here. Who's good? I'm not interested in doing the good thing. I'm interested in doing what is beneficial and loving for myself first and for others second. I'm interested in going about it in the divine orderly way, not an ego based way. Self-love, self-honor, self-respect is a divine order way. And let everything come from that. The gift of self is a divine gift. It is to be cherished. It is to be nurtured. It is to be loved and respected and honored. And if you don't do that first and foremost, you are just screwing yourself over. For somebody else's ego who don't have no respect or love for their own selves they're just catering to their egos and i don't care how they dress it up or how pretty they make it sound that's all it is because nobody who truly love you will put you in in any compromising position whatsoever because that is not the way love operates that is not the characteristic of love it isn't and I think people ought to get that straight in their head. And they better get it real quick, like. Or you just be a lamb on an altar. And let me tell you something. The divine source of love and order does not ask anyone to sacrifice themselves and their happiness and their well-being for its benefit. It doesn't need it. It doesn't require it. And it isn't asking for it. And that's the truth. And as they say, the truth will set you free. So be free. And be yourself. And love yourself. As yourself. And the rest. Will to love yourself. To take care of yourself. And to make sure that you are the best at what you can be. Is the greatest show of appreciation and gratitude that you can offer to the divine source and it is the greatest gift that you can possibly offer to anyone else i don't ask you to be good what i will have you do if anything is for you to love yourself more so you can love me better that is one of the best things that you could do for me or anybody else
But that's all I have to say for today. God bless ye all my sisters and brothers. And may divine truth, light, and strength, and wisdom guide you forward. Take care.